Hey, good morning. Day three FCF in our two-week journey, six days, two weeks, where we're looking at stones in Scripture. And I know, you know, it's kind of an odd thing to rally our thoughts around, but, but we are. And today we're still going to be looking in the book of Joshua. We're going to go all the way to the end of it, to chapter 24. I'm only going to read you one verse. So I'll read the verse and then I'll kind of fill in what led up to this. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 26, it says, On that day Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he drew up for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these, these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and he set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. That's our key verse there. He took a large stone. So let me give you the picture here. Joshua is now 110 years old when we read this. He has been leading the Lord's people uh, ever since you know, Moses had, had died and passed on. And so it's been a long run for Joshua. And um, his run is over. And so now he's wanting to get the people into a good place when his leadership passes on and they're going to have to learn to follow other leadership. So what he does is he rehashes the law of God. God's given them lots of laws by this time, national laws as well as moral laws. And he reviews these laws with the Israelites and he gets them to say, okay, are, are you in or are you out? As for me and my house, he says in earlier verses, we will serve the Lord. Well, what about you guys? And they say, no, 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 we too will serve the Lord. He says, well, then get rid of all connection with the gods of the, the people of the lands, the Jebusites and the, you know, the Jergesites and all kinds of sites and the mosquito bites and so forth. They agree. <clears throat> so what he does, after he gets verbal agreement from them, he gets this huge stone, he sets it up, he says, now this stone will be a witness that this day you entered into covenant to agree to walk with God, to do His word, to do His will, to be His people, to live the way He Himself lives before the people of the land and the earth and so forth. And so he reviews the covenant and this big stone is a symbol that the Israelites can look at physically for the rest of their days. Now why is this important? Believe it or not, they couldn't just walk down to a bookstore in those days and buy a copy of the Bible. It, it didn't exist. The Bible was in its rudimentary stages of formation, and though they had scriptural scrolls, they were minimal, and so they didn't have access to scripture, so the stone became a symbol, a healthy symbol for a, a verbally dependent society. Um, in these early days of development, you know, most societies, uh, biblical and the Israelites included, they were really dependent upon memorizing things, hearing things verbally, memorizing them, passing them on, making sure that it was accurate. So they had a set of scrolls that the leadership might have uh, access to, but the people wouldn't. So something like a stone became a really helpful thing. Let's say an Israelite starts to struggle with being faithful to the Word of God. Uh, they're being tempted to follow the, the other peoples of the land and their ways and so forth. They see that stone and they say, wait, wait, wait a minute, I can't do this. I, I'm called to be a special kind of a person, to live a special way, the way that the, the one true God Himself lives and the way He has laid out for us in His Word. They couldn't get to the Word directly themselves. They would hear it as their, their tribal culture would r review it verbally again and again, but that stone could trigger something visually as well. So, I say all that to say this, I wonder if it wouldn't be beneficial for us to have reminders. Uh, sometimes, you know, we put notes for ourselves and, you know, sticky notes and different things and rubber bands on our wrists and all kinds of things. But what if you're struggling in an area or uh, we're tempted to forget that our primary calling in this life is to live as close to Christ as we can and to make Him known as we embrace His Word, His will, and His ways and we demonstrate His lifestyle before a watching world just like the Israelites were meant to. And what if for a while we, we had something to trigger our memory? I, I remember for a while people, it was kind of a fad, they wore these little bracelets, you know, the what would Jesus do bracelets. And I used to think they were kind of hokey, honestly, but, but I'm not so sure. If, if something like this is helpful to trickle, trigger our memories, to re remind us who we are and whose people we are and, and what kind of a life we're called to live and what our mission is on this earth and, and who we represent and are meant to represent every day of our lives, everywhere we journey into, well then those uh, things that trigger our memory might be good things, just like this big stone. It's not magic, it's just something to help us remember 
our true identity as followers of Christ and what Jesus himself called, we are the people that are meant to be the, the light of God to the world, to a watching world. I hope you'll remember your identity and maybe, maybe you'll find some kind of a little memorial for yourself that'll trigger you to recall all the time who you are and whose you are.